Well, I wonder how much rain we got last night. Uh, looks like we got seven tenths. Well, may have evaporated some, considering it's 12 noon. But we'll say seven tenths. And since it hadn't rained, has it spooky? In a week, we'll take it. Because we were getting tired of watering. Yes, we were. How you doing, Mr. Gray? I see you've been up on the car again. What's going on, Spooky? You doing okay? Oh, well, hello there, friend and family. Good to see you again today. On July the 3rd, 2023. Yeah, and like I was saying, we finally got some rain yesterday evening. I think it started around 5, 5.30. It rained off and on from time to time. You know, those pop-up showers through the nighttime. And at times it got a little bumpy, you know, a little rough. I think our highest wind gust is 38.5. But nothing too much happened here. But further north up in Alabama and in Georgia as well, things got a little bit rough. A lot of trees down, a lot of power lines down. I think at one time there was, what, maybe 40,000 people without power in the state of Alabama. I'm not sure about the others, but here, we were just fine, and for that, it's a blessing. But since this is the first week of July, let's walk around the property, take a walk about, as I call it, and see what we got going on, and where we'll be going from here. What do you say? I know it's a little warm, it's 90, but for us, that's a cool wave, and they say it only feels like 97. Instead of 108, I'll take it any day. Let's see what we got going on. What do you say? Well, since we were checking the rain gauge, we'll just check our blueberries. More and more are becoming ripe. As you can see, that rain really starts to puff them up. They start getting so much bigger. Can you see that? Ooh, and they are juicy too. Yep. And I was out here yesterday for about an hour eating just handfuls of them while the mockingbirds and blue jays were trying to chase me off. But as you can see, there's plenty for me and plenty for the birds. Trust me, there is. It's been a great year for the blueberries when I actually thought it was not. Yep. There are plenty for me, the birds, the feather friends, and even Spooky too. Yep, on occasion, he'll partake. I think he just likes eating whatever he sees me eat too. <laughs> yep, they're juicy. A lot more juicy than they were yesterday afternoon. That rain really, really infused them with juice. Yeah, it did. Oh, but we're going to have to get to mowing. Yeah, we'll go up here and check the pig. I just checked it yesterday afternoon late. Dug underneath the mulch to make sure wasn't dried out and it wasn't and the pigs are starting to plump up as you can see and you got to start checking them in the morning when you do your morning walk about and as you walk by through the day because when they just start to get ripe the birds are going to go after them they're just waiting to up in the trees but there's plenty and you know what I always share them with them too. We should get two harvests this year. I'm thinking they're looking fine. Oh, that wind did get up. Pretty ferocious, you would think, by the looks of it. I was actually surprised that it wasn't more than 38.5. 
Oh, see our cucumbers here coming along fine. Lots of blossoms. Ooh, that's a fine looking one there, don't you think? Won't be long, you'll be ready to come in the house. Oh yeah. And we got another one right there. And this is the burpless bush hybrid from Bonnie. And over here, this is our straight eight. I don't see any cucumbers yet, but unlike the last time we walked around the gardens, there were no blossoms on. Now there are blossoms, albeit they're all male. And that's something to note. Almost always, the males are first before the females. So don't panic if that's all you see. Eventually, the girls come out. But overall, they're looking mighty fine. And the straight eight now is about seven feet tall in comparison to the burpless bush hybrid. Albeit, it's supposed to be a bush. It's now over four feet high. I guess that's what they determine a bush is. It's not as high <laughs> or as long as a standard variety. Being that the straight eight's an heirloom. And over here, this is a hybrid, the burpless bush. But you'll notice I still haven't picked up the remnants when we were cleaning up around the bamboo forest. Nope. I need to, though. I keep saying I will, but in all honesty, and my back's been just a touch sore. And as of today, even though I still have things I have to do every day, it's feeling the best it's felt since I stopped where all that lays. Don't know what I did. I twisted, turned, something went away. It wasn't because of strain, because none of it was heavy that day. No, it wasn't. Now, like I say, that wind got up to about 38 and a half miles per hour, and I was out here during it, right until, you know, the rain started to fall. And one thing, these cucumbers, they were just losing their minds. They were going everywhere. So first thing this morning, I had to come out and get them all straightened out. You know, sort of like getting the girl's hair untangled, you know? Oh, let's look down in here for those cucumbers. Yep, I know they're there, because I gotta get them this afternoon. Let's get in here and take a look at them. Yep, right there they are. You see them in there? Let's sneak around here. Ooh, I think those are looking really nice. Perfect. Those, <laughs> we'll be enjoying them for dinner tonight. The first two cucumbers. And I think since dinner is going to be a salad of some type, we're going to go ahead and grab that banana and ring it up too and throw it in the bowl with everything else. We can have some sweet banana pepper, chunk up some cucumber, some iceberg lettuce, some onion touch of garlic too, some cheese, either some ham or turkey, and a little tomato too, and whatever else we got in the fridge. Hey, I got some green bell peppers in there too. Yeah, chop up some of them, throw them in there. Make one fine salad. And there's way more, there's way more cucumbers forming on these two plants. Understand this whole menagerie here is just two cucumber plants. See the other one right here? And there's little babies in it. Oh, there's one right below y'all that you didn't see. And another down there too. This planting of only two burpless bush hybrid from Bonnie. Unlike the other planting is really pumping out the cukes. Don't know the reason. Maybe it's just the spot. But they've both been watered the same, fertilized the same, 
and they're the same variety. So who knows? And they're only about, what, 50 feet apart? But it's that 50 feet that can be all the difference. In sunshine, moisture, soil type, and nutrient. Yeah, in just 50 feet, even though everything was treated the same. Ooh, and it's smoking hot out here. Oh, there's another cucumber right up there. They seem to be everywhere over here. <laughs> oh, in our Poblano, our only hot pepper that we have. Well, she's looking fine. Let me show you here. See right in there? Ooh, look at that one hiding there. Now that's a fine hot pepper. And that's going to spice up a meal or two for the old man in the country kitchen soon. Yes, it is. Oh. And since y'all didn't stop by yesterday, I had to take care of some other business. See, peppers are in the same family, nightshades, as tomatoes. And they, too, get similar diseases, such as leaf spot, as you can see here. So I did have to do some spraying yesterday. And what do I use? For those of you who have been with me for years, no. I use hydrogen peroxide to kill the disease. It's not a preventative. It's a killer. And I sprayed like I normally do. And now that it rained again the day after, uh, I'll be spraying again soon. But it kills the disease. I've had great success with it. And if you'd like me to show you my secret formula, even though many use it, and it's no big secret, my great-grand used it, my grandparents used it, my dad used it, and I've used it. And there's many here on certain garden channels, like Gary Pillarcheck, which I've followed for years. He uses it, too. Yeah, but the poblano, she's looking fine. And then we've got right here a red lunchbox. And it's got, what, one, two, three peppers there. Four, five there, six, seven, mm, seven or eight on that little bitty plant. I mean, <clears throat> it was suffering too. And that's why I sprayed. And you can see right there, yep, the spots. See it? I'm going to call it Spatoria leaf spot. I'd have to drag it inside, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But it's dead now. As you can see, by the new growth, it's not happening anymore. I have great success. And you've seen it over the years. I've taken tomato plants that have been just covered up with blight. And I've saved them and grown them throughout the year. And our bean plantings, they're looking mighty fine. We got one here, trying to find a pole to climb up. Right there. You give them a little bit of help. Sometimes you got to do that. And then they'll wrap around, and off they'll go. Yeah, they're looking fine. Both the first planting and the second planting behind. We did some weeding. The last couple of days too you know just a little stuff yep we did this banana pepper which is the youngest of the two this one is far younger than that one there that one was bought first week of march this was bought oh lord sometime in may after i returned from the hospital after that accident and if you look up under here, you can see it's got plenty of peppers too coming on. They're everywhere. So we're going to be enjoying some banana peppers between just two plants. It'll probably be more than one little old man can ever eat. So 
so maybe some of my neighbors will get to partake of them too. We just have to wait and see. Yep, <clears throat> I got another pile of stuff up there that still ain't picked up. You know, I was wanting an overcast day. Maybe cooler than anywhere from 96 to 108. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to happen. And you might say, well, get out there in the early morning. Yeah, you get out here in the early morning, and it don't take long. It's 85. And one thing you got to remember is your humidity goes up its highest right before dawn. Yep. Look at that in the weather charts and graphs for your area, because that's the way it is here. And you remember those plants I didn't want to throw away that had grown so long and lanky and I stuck them here and piled my glass clippings around them and I'm going to let them sprawl and I'll just keep putting some more grass clippings here as I do every year and let them grow on top of it instead of staking them up you know and see what we get Ain't gonna cost me nothing. Nothing at all. And our acorn squash plant volunteer that came up in the compost pile. Well, you can see, it's putting out squash. One right there. There's more in there somewhere. Yes, there is. We just leave it be. We don't do nothing to it. Oh yeah, there's another one right there. There's one right here. Oh, here's one that didn't make it. Didn't quite get pollinated. See it? And that happens. Oh, we got one under that leaf. Here, see it right there? It's hiding right there. They're sizing up nice. We got our other volunteer tomatoes right here. We're just letting sprawl. But we've got an unwelcome guest. And one you may have been seen before. Yep. Not all visitors to Mr. Tom's neighborhood are welcome. Unfortunately true. Now, that doesn't include any of my friends and family and all of you, but it does this one here. See him right there? Here, we'll get him out here where you can see him really good. Now you can see him. Yep. You know what that is? Well, that's a tomato hornworm. See the horn? Horn right there? That's on his derriere. You know, unlike a unicorn, hornworms have the horn on the rear end, not the front end. See, the front end's for munching. I think we all know what the rear end's for. Now, unfortunately, he's got to go away. He's got to go to the hornworm heaven, which is far, far away. Now, if we had chickens, quail, or what have you, he'd be a tasty treat. But we don't. But we can't have them up here, even though these are volunteer tomatoes. Ah, he's trying to attack me. Gosh, dog it, he can bite. <laughs> yes, he can. He's biting me. He's biting me. Hey, he can't. He can bite. You don't think you can bite? Just grab one like this and let him get a hold of you real good. Yeah, he ain't happy. But cover your ears and close your eyes because he's got to take a short ride. Well, let's look around real quick and see if there's another one because normally where there's one, there's another. I'm not seeing one right away. I was looking for him the other other day I thought he was around but I just couldn't find him and look at here all of you stopped by 
and we found them no problem today. But yeah, the squash is doing fine. You can see another one right there. We'll get another one right over here. And I think there's some more in there somewhere too. Hey, we didn't plant it. We just threw, you know, the squash we'd ate and the seeds we cleaned out into the compost pile. They sat all fall and all winter too. And look what came up this spring. And it'll help feed us too this winter. Yeah, it will. It didn't cost us a cent. Ooh, plenty of little wildflowers over here though, as you can see. Looking nice. Oh, and Mr. Bumble loves them too. Yeah, you know, he's camera shy. Either that or he's upset because he's not getting actor deal wages. Yeah, that's sort of like Kitty Crew too. But another volunteer here is a cucumber. Of course, you know, we picked out several cucumbers from here back sometime in March or was it April prior to the accident. Yep. And we got them planted. Well, two survivors from all that up in the front south side driveway bed. But right here, look at here, look at here. There's a cucumber right there. And I'm sure there's many more if we look. And we're just going to let this sprawl on the ground too. Let it be, uh, as they say, El Natural. And we got some onions coming up from those onion ends we chop off with the roots that we throw out here too and let nature take it from there. But these flowers are just beautiful. As you can see, Mr. Bumble improves. And on occasion, you will find out here a hummingbird or two. Mm-mm. I'm seeing something I don't like. Yep. I'm seeing those. Those are... Yep, stink bugs, squash bugs. Yeah, squash and a stink bug look real close to similar. It doesn't really matter. Both are bad. Yeah, as long as they stay over there in the compost pile, it'll be okay. This acorn squash plant is looking fine. Yep, got some buds starting to form. Huh, got one blossom showing. I think it'll be okay. Our little onion ends we stuck in here from cutting our ends off of green onions. Yeah, they're starting to pick up and come along. There's only eight now, but there's room for so many more. And soon there will be as we keep buying them and chopping the ends off when we get them to eat. And you can see the tomatoes are looking fine. In fact, <laughs> it's sort of funny. Maybe that's how I get it to rain. You know, over the last couple of days, me and the kitty crew, we got these posts put in. They're not too high, but trust me, they'll be extended should the need arise, which I know it will, and that. But... I didn't want to get up on a ladder and drive in the big tall ones. I know how to extend them. So yeah, my tomatoes normally grow to the sky. So this is just a start. But I got in here again and started cultivating, you know, yesterday afternoon. And as luck would have it, just like the last time I did it, the rain came too. So maybe... Maybe, just maybe, they thought I was doing a rain dance out here. I don't know. Whew. But, we'll do it again. The weeds, we're finally defeating them. Yeah. And I mean, we had, uh, what was it? Eight celebrity plants. And we had one die. And we had to go get another at our locally owned and operated superfoods and it's right here and this is one of one i've never planted 
that I've often seen. And it's from Bonnie. It's their original. Our favorite tomato. Now, it's an indeterminate. Yeah, I should have been paying attention. Because these are celebrity all around it. And they're a determinate. Which means they won't grow as high or grow as long. But that's okay. We can make allowances for this one. And it'll be just fine. I mean, it's not quite up to the string supports. But I'm sure it won't be long before it is. And at some point in time during the season, it'll surpass its cousins that surround it, the celebrities. Because like I say, they're a determinant. And the Bonnie original, their favorite tomato, is an indeterminate, which means it just keeps growing on. And you can see we got the peppers in. And we got in some little posts. And that, we got in one line of twine in the Florida weave pattern. And I'm glad I did, because the last two days, with gusts up between 35 and 38, you know, peppers, and these are a little bit lanky. And, you know, they're a little bit skinny. They weren't doing too good, because left them in their little six pack way too long so yeah that wind that came along probably would have snapped them off because to tomatoes they're stronger than peppers peppers are sort of brittle have you ever noticed where the tomatoes may take the wind the peppers right beside it won't so i'm glad at least had one tier of twine up to help them get through the storms. And so far they did. And before we got through yesterday, we finally got the last two pepper plants in that I had rescued. You know how I am. As the season grows on, plants are left behind nobody wants and they're left to die. So I had picked up two more of my favorites you know how much I love these little lunchbox peppers. And these are lunchbox orange, sweet snack and pepper. And they are, they're a bite or two. Love them to death. I mean, you can chop them up for a salad or you can saute them too. Yeah, but they're not real big. You see, my friends and family, big ain't always better. Sometimes big means fibrous, tasteless, no good too where the smaller is the sweetest of the varieties too mm -hmm. i found that to be quite true it's just like my blueberries some people say well i've got blueberries as big as nickels and quarters well good for you but my blueberries are more true to the original they're nice they're sweet they're just big enough they make me happy. They don't got to be the size of my thumb. <laughs> and we still haven't done nothing with this bed. In fact, you know, the kitties get over here romping in it. And I got to order some screws so I can tie all the logs back together. As you can see, we got one kicked out there. That's the kitties. <laughs> they like to get up and run around play with each other but we still got our onions here and i wanted to show you there's a difference in these onions yeah this again is cutting off the end of onions where i buy them at the store both green and yellow and you can see right here where this one's come up and there's one right here and one right here now when i planted the end there's only one end and it's made two. Same way over here, see? One, two. But what I planted was one root end. Yeah. You can see the same situation happening over here. Now, this one only had one. No, by lordy, it's got two, too. 
this one only one it's laid over and that one only one those are most likely the bigger ones are from the yellow onions the smaller ones are from the green they're a multiplying onion and they'll continue to multiply I've got some onion sets in here that are just starting to root and they'll be shooting up stock soon too yep not sure what we'll do with the rest of the bed I'm thinking some leaf lettuces radishes stuff of that nature for the fall of course we still got to burn that pile to clear the way because whatever we plant in here when we set that on fire it's going to hurt what's ever in this bed yeah the heat will just be too extreme yep it surely will yeah we don't want to do that that'll be anti-productive you know but let's head on down to our next stop the tire planter and somebody's asked me why don't i put everything in one place why do i have it all around the property and i'll continue to have more in other places it allows me to get out and walk yeah get my steps in without even trying now the last time we were down here visiting we were putting in okra you remember well let me show you something i'll show you it right now okay we'll just get closer and closer see right there we got an okra coming up see right here we got an okra coming up let's head on over here see right there got another okra coming up now those were soaked in water not overnight not a week but for one hour two at the most then we stuck them in here and you saw what I did there's there's a video using my super secret tool yep my index finger you know you can do a lot with this index finger just think about it. all the things you can do with just this finger that makes you happy too hey there's another one coming up I can see it right there so yeah I'm thinking there'll be plenty more too in time. Maybe too many. Maybe we'll have to thin them out. Who knows? But if we have to thin, we'll try snatching them out and putting them in other areas too. Now we did have to spray yesterday, like I say. Another thing we sprayed for was not just for spatoria leaf spot or blight or what have you, but we also had to spray for something that comes oh, about this time of year every year and that's the good old army worms another invasive species brought over here from distance land yep it's not from america it was brought to america and it can strip your crops in a heartbeat and i was noticing my kale leaves you can see them right there yep see there's chunks out of them you can see more chunks here well I was having sort of a two-prong attack I thought maybe it was slugs but I came out at night couldn't find no slugs see right here yeah there's a lot of that eating away but then yesterday morning nope day four yesterday morning I got out here very very early no and I wasn't hunt, hunting wabbits either yeah nope I was hunting but was eating the kale besides me and I got to looking and I was seeing these holes and I started turning over every leaf and then look what we just found here oh boy yeah I missed one right there he is yep and there's a couple of different varieties of army worms I think there's a beet army worm a fall army worm yep now I have to look up this one now he's still small now I just sprayed this with the hydrogen peroxide which dissipates 
normally it irritates them it burns them a little bit from an exothermic reaction you know that fizzing because they're a living organism you know like it does when you put it in a cut on you yeah it irritates them and they fall off and you smoosh them well i apparently didn't get none on this one because he's still up in there chewing on my stuff and you can see he's looking around on my hand but this little bitty thing can do major damage and he'll grow as he's eating big holes in your veggies and they love greens kale collards cabbage they love everything corn tomatoes well y'all you didn't hear it or see it probably but when we were out there looking at that army worm that we found and I was explaining well this is how hot it is the old GoPro overheated again it just can't hang so we had to rush to the shade yeah I mean as soon as it started beeping all of you took off anyway all my friends and family went running for the shade so I grabbed the GoPro and ran with you too so we're gonna have to let the old GoPro cool off a little and while it's cooling off we can get us a cold drink. Got some sweet tea. Of course, always got fine pagos and different flavors too. But when it, it, the camera gets cool and we get cool too, we'll be back and continue our garden tour. Okay? Well, we're back. On, yeah, July the 3rd, 2023, just like we were when all of you took off running to the shade when the GoPro overheated. Yeah, we had to take her on in, bring all of you with us, and cool down, get a cold drink, and chill for a while. But now we're back at it on my first week of July. Garden walkabout and tour. Something else I did yesterday. You know, getting back to that okra, it's only been three days. Yeah, we stuck that in the ground on June the 29th. That would be 29th, 30th, 1st, the 2nd. The third, well, five days, and it's up. I'm just letting it soak an hour or two. Yeah, Cleo, she wants attention, and she's biting my feet. <laughs> yeah, not good. But let me show you what else we're up to, and we'll take a look at the last garden bed that we have so far for this year. You know it all. The South Side Driveway Garden Bed. I named them all. Well, I guess I name everything, don't I? <laughs> but we planted more yesterday. Now here was our little staging area. You've all seen it. You know, when I got out of the hospital, it had tomato plants here, six pack of celebrities. It had a six pack of Bonnie Bells. It had lunchbox peppers, sweet banana peppers here. Everything was here on this old one oven uh, roaster or whatever it is and I'd also got out these here now six uh, acorn squash we snuck out of that compost pile along with six cucumbers all of it was volunteers so this is where we had everything staged after the accident you know it was over by the oak tree before the accident yeah but this is what we got left. Now you're gonna see two new six packs here. Nothing sprouted out. Well, I took some more of that okra, you know, the cow horn okra from Haas Tools, yeah, that I bought. They didn't send it to me. Yeah, it wasn't free. I bought it. And I put them, after I soaked them overnight, that's because I forgot about it. <laughs> Not because I wanted to. I stuck them in these two six packs two seeds for each cell yeah just in case they didn't come up because i didn't know my okra seed was going to be good and come up as good as it is right now in that tire planter yeah so i was hedging my bets you know it's always a good thing to do but as you can see the sun's back out blazing a cloud got in front of it for a minute or two and i thought well that would make it easier getting out here 
and showing you what we got left. But we're going to try. Maybe the old GoPro will cooperate. And we got our potted kales right here. And you can see they were suffering damage too. Yep. And what did they have on them? Yep, they had army worms too. There was a little egg case right there. You see it? I just smooshed them. But there's different ways to go about this. Army worms can be devastating. Look them up. You'll see where they will ravage an entire field nearly overnight once they get started. You got to be watching. That's why I tell you. Check them in the morning. Check them in the midday. Check them in the evening. Yeah, a good time to be checking your plants is when you're watering or you're picking or doing something else. But if you're not doing anything for a day or two, you still need to be checking for worms, for hoppers. Yeah, I found some hoppers, grasshoppers, in the kale forest too, just this morning. They have since went to grasshopper heaven, just saying. And they can wipe you out, you know. We call them grasshoppers, but biblically, they're locusts. And scientifically, they're locusts. But the kale in the pots is doing just fine. Yes, it is. And his little cousin over here, the collard, you know, the wallflower. She was all by herself, so we had to put her over here with her cousins, the kale, so she'd be happy. And the kale is looking fine. They're happy with her. And our collards over here starting to size up nicely. I can't believe it in all this heat, but they are. But I'm going to show you another thing. See right here this leaf? And you see the areas right there that look sort of translucent? Yeah, well this morning I flipped them over. And on the back side, you know what there was? You can see the discoloration there. That's because I wiped them all off and smooshed them. Little bitty tiny. Oh, there's some. I mean, they just keep coming. See them right there? You see them? You know what those are? Baby army worms. Yes, they are. Sorry, you had to see that. I know it's kind of sad. Even army worms should live, right? No, they're eating my food. <laughs> yeah, and you can see. They can do quite a lot of damage. That little bitty tiny army worm that's no more. And I wiped them off this morning. But, oh, there's another one. I mean, I don't know where they're coming from. It's like the army worm stork is dropping them off. You know, maybe they got little bitty tiny parachutes. And, you know, they come gliding in on a moth. And they just all bail off her. I don't know. But you can see some damage right there. And they'll be on the underside of your leaves. Yeah. Or maybe my oh, my eyes are too old. Or I was too still asleep this morning to realize I didn't get them all. Yeah, well, later this evening, I'll be out here with a flashlight because they, sh they show up better. And I will be seeing I missed any because that's what I was going to say for the camera overheat last time there's different ways to approach pest control you know you can do it with the smoosh method your thumb your index finger you can do the swipe yeah those are organic methods albeit mechanical you can take your garden hose and wash every leaf off rather briskly and they'll fall down on the ground of course you'll need to scoop them up because they can crawl and they'll crawl right back on up just saying and then they do make one or two organic insecticides uh, one's rather strong and powerful that contains pyrethrum and you can look it up any pyrethrum based uh, insecticides will definitely kill the army worms too and it's all natural it's an extract derived from the chrysanthemums look all that up i'm not going to give everything to you okay you gotta do some work yourself 
But anyway, that's what we're fighting right now. Is we're fighting army worms. And like I say, they'll get on everything that's yummy. You can see some more damage there. In fact, if we look very closely, there's some little ones right there. Ah, me. They're just coming out of everywhere. And I swear to you, and you can see where these leaves have been swiped this morning. Yep, we were swiping. We thought we were swiping everywhere. And I don't know how I missed them. Here's some more here. See them? Little bitty tiny things. But they won't be tiny long. I mean, even tiny, you can see the damage they're doing. And they just sit there eating all day long, all night long. You know the song. All day, all night, Mary Ann. I can't remember any more of the song, but, you know, hey, we might as well sing. What can you do? The beans are looking nice, but something's eating them too. Most likely, what's getting the beans is the hoppers. Yeah, the grasshoppers. They love them too. We're trying to get the beans to climb up the poles. They're not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> but the beans are looking fine. Hey, I got one here. Climbing now. See that? This one's reaching over wanting to grab a hold too. Man, those beans are looking fine. And then, if you get over here, these were two of the six cucumber plants we transplanted out of our compost pile. They're the brothers and sisters of the one that's still over there growing. Now, we did have four that didn't make the transplant because of everything that happened. But you can see here, some more damage from, yep, you guessed it army worms so you got to be due diligent you got to stay on top of it it's going to be a never-ending battle till they migrate through yep I can tell it is going to be because there's another one right there yep and I mean if you don't mind using chemicals there's another way to deal with these. You can hit them with some 7 or some BT. That's Bacillus thuringiensis. It's actually a uh, enzyme. It's all organic. Or, no, it's a bacterium. Excuse me. It's been a while. And uh, you spray it on your plants. And you can spray it, not, it's a good for all caterpillars. Nothing else but caterpillars. You spray it on your plants, and what it does, they come along and they eat the leaf with the Bacillus thuringiensis on it. It makes them sick and causes them to stop eating, and they basically starve to death. Yeah, it's a cruel, slow way to go. But you gotta do something. Or you can do, like the little old man, Come out here every day if you're retired. Make sure you're wearing some shorts and light colored clothing, which is something we all forget about since we're trying to be stylish, you know, while we're out here in the garden. Yeah, <laughs> not so much. The lighter the clothes, the better. It reflects the sun instead of baking it and absorbing it. Or absorbing and baking it. There's some more. Gosh, I know I smushed them all. I looked at every leaf. Like I'm doing now. They must have been little specks this morning. And I couldn't see them. And I mean, it don't take them no time to grow. No time at all. Because they're just steady feeding. Yeah, well, I think for now... Yep, there's another egg case. Got it. Yep, one egg case does not mean one army worm. I'm not sure how many come out of them. I haven't sat there for 
you know, days and checked it out. But this is our Husky Cherry Red, one of our cherry tomatoes. It's doing fine. If you look up here, it's about to have some blossoms on it as well. And our final tomato, which does have blossoms, as you can see, two clusters right there, another cluster down there, and that is our grape. Yeah, from our friends at Bonnie. It's a grape. It's the Tammy G hybrid tomato, indeterminate, as you can see. So, their grapes are bigger than cherries. Yeah. But they're both fine. And they both make for some good tomato wine. That's something I haven't seen made or heard of in a long, long time. If you know about tomato wine, let me know in the comments below the video. Well, that's pretty much the state of affairs in our different garden plots. Here, in my little piece of paradise in the deep south of Alabama, Mr. Tom's neighborhood Woo, we're getting back into that shade and heading up to the walk <laughs> it feels so much better and so good and you can see spooky he's stretched out loving it too <laughs> my faithful guard cat oh I gotta admit, the old front porch under the shade of the ancient mother oak tree with that light breeze evaporating the dampness upon our body feels mighty fine right now. But I know, whew, as damp as I may be at the moment, if I went inside, I'd be freezing cold. Yeah, and it's not because the air conditioner is down low. I don't know where you set yours, but mine's set at 78. Well, that is, unless Gracie has turned it down. I don't know about you, but I'm probably going to rehydrate. Picking and eating a whole bunch of those blackberries again this afternoon, like I did yesterday. So y'all, there's just a little garden walk about and tour of where we're at and how our little garden plots are growing here on the property. It ain't much, but we enjoy it. We've got quite a bit if you come to think about it. Because you know what? In this heat and humidity, there ain't nothing finer than a dinner salad. No heat from the stove or the oven to heat up the house. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's when you go outdoors and use the gas grill and the barbecue. Yeah, I don't want to be around them neither. You know, I just drag out a chef's knife, an onion, tomato, yeah, my head of lettuce, hey, some of that cabbage too, and those cucumbers, that sweet banana, and I between just that with maybe some chopped turkey and ham, I could boil an egg. I can make an amazing chef salad for dinner for two or maybe three or four. How many of you decide to stay and enjoy dinner with us today? But that's all we got for you today on July the 3rd, 2023, which reminds me. Tomorrow is a celebration of the independence of our nation. Yes, sir. It's July the 4th. And I do hope tomorrow you will spend it with your friends, your family, and celebrate our independence too. I know many here, especially now on social media, think that this country is so bad. It's collapsing. Our freedoms are all taken away. We got nothing to live for or look forward to. Well, take it from one that's traveled to many other countries, some close and some far away. Yeah, in my mind, 
there's no other place better. Now, it may be as good, but not it better than the good old U.S. of A. And with that, I'll leave you. You know, until the next episode, you see us in Mr. Tom's neighborhood. You know us all. You know Cleo, which bit me on my feet trying to get attention earlier to Spooky and Speedy, no old Mr. Gray, which I might add has got to go in to the bets here one day. And then there's little Gracie inside commanding the house. <laughs> and on a rare occasion, we still see Heathcliff around as well. But until that time we visit again, please take care out there. Stay sane. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. Take your, up your minerals and vitamins too. And as always, may you be blessed by God as you bless those in your life. Goodbye for now. Oh, oh man, I'm going to go in, grab a fine drink from my friends at Bago, and cool down. Hey, y'all want one too? Come on inside. Until then, later all. <laughs>